Keith Pryor from uh, San Francisco. I have a question. When you're valuing the companies and you discount back the future earnings you talked about, how many years out do you generally go? And if you don't go out a general number of years, how do you arrive at that time period? Well, that's that's a, a very good question, and it's it's I mean it's the heart of investing or buying businesses, which we regard as the same thing, but. And it is the framework in which we operate. I mean, we are trying to look at businesses in terms of what kind of cash can they produce if we're buying all of them, or will they produce if we're buying part of them? And there's a difference. Uh, and then, at what discount rate do we do we bring it back? And and then I think your question was, how far out do we look and all that? Despite the fact that we can define that in in a very kind of simple and direct equation, you know, we are, we, we've we never actually sat down and, and, and written out a set of numbers that uh, to relate that equation. We do it in our heads in a way, uh, obviously. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. But uh, there's no piece of paper, uh, and, and, and we never, there never was a piece of paper that shows what our calculation on Hellsberg's or C's Candy or the Buffalo News was in that respect. Uh, so it would be attaching a little more scientific uh, quality to our analysis than there really is if I gave you some gobbledygook about, well, we do it for 18 years and stick a terminal value on and do all of this. Uh, we are sitting at the, in the office thinking about that question with each business or each investment, and we, we have discount rates in, in a general way in mind, but uh, we really like the decision to be obvious enough to us that it doesn't require making a detailed calculation. And, and uh, uh, it's the framework, but it's not applied in the sense that we actually fill in all the variables. Is that a fair way of stating it, Chairman? We have such a fingers and toes style around Berger Hathaway. You know, you, know, you sort of count. And yeah. the three. I've, I've never seen it. You know, we, Warren talks about these discounted cash flows. I've never seen him do one. <laughs> it, it, yeah. If it is, there are some things you only do in private, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> if, if it isn't blue perfect, obvious that it's going to work out well if you do the calculation, he tends to go on to the next idea. Yeah, it, it's sort of auto, I, it, it is true. You don't if you have to if you have to actually do it on with pencil and paper. It's too close to think about. I mean, it ought to just kind of scream at you that you've got this huge margin of safety. The DCF model, probably one of the most popular ways to value a company. You probably heard of it already in investing videos out there. To try to come up with a fair value for the stock using discount of free cash flow. All right, so let's go to stock analyzer tool. So what I did here is called a reverse discounted cash flow calculation. The concept is super simple. First, you take all the cash that you think this business is going to generate throughout its lifetime, and then you discount all of that to present value. You subtract the cash, you subtract the debt, and then you divide this by the total number of shares outstanding, and then you're left with your estimated intrinsic value. Now, the advice that I hear a lot that's repeated online is if you do this type of analysis and you get a number, and if the stock price is currently trading at above this number, then you should go and buy the stock. And it's kind of weird because I actually don't see Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger using this approach at all from the video we just seen. So here's a discounted cash flow model for PayPal, a company that I hear is talked about a lot these days. And this model was created by my friend Digital Halo. Shout out to him for letting me use this in this video. And there's a bunch of other discounted cash flow models I can find out how to create too online. So we need to start by taking the 2023 free cash flow number, which I'm going to just take from Seeking Alpha. So go to the cash from operations, copy this, and then come and paste it over here. 
So next, what we need to do is project how much this free cash flow is going to grow in the next five years. So one way to do this that's pretty popular is you can just go over here and look at it and say in the past five years, PayPal grew their free cash flow by 18%. So just to be conservative, why don't I put a 15% growth rate assumption for the next five years, and then I'll put a 5% free cash flow growth assumption for the years after that. So next, what we're going to do is plug in their working capital, which I'm going to go to the balance sheet for that and just put the total current assets, copy and paste this number into here. And then I'm going to go and look at their total debt. So I'll just take that as their total liabilities, copy, paste that into here. And then here you can see after we plug all that information in, and put a discount rate of let's just say 10 percent it tells us wow paypal is significantly undervalued the intrinsic value should be 113 dollars and 15 cents per share and right now it's about 60 some dollars so we should go buy this stock it's 50 percent undervalued now the biggest problem with this approach is how realistic or how confident are you that PayPal is going to continue to grow their free cash flow by 15% each year for the next five years? Like even if you're super duper bullish on PayPal, would you bet your life on that number? Now, the thing is, most management teams can't even predict their earnings for the next year, let alone the next five years. And I remember in 2021, during PayPal's Investor Day, they confidently proclaimed that in the next five years, they could increase their earnings by 20% each year. Our compounded annual growth in revenue was 18%. When we look at the next five years, we believe that we will achieve 20% compounded annual revenue growth. We'll do this while expanding our margins. We've done it over the last five years and we'll do it over the next five years. Now, fast forward to 2023, how's that gone for them so far? I would say not super well. And the CEO that promised that, Dan Schulman, is retired. PayPal CEO Dan Schulman is set to retire in December, ending his nine-year tenure at the helm. Now, if you look at PayPal's earnings growth, you can see that it's went from high double digits to low single digits. So if we go back to our model and we change our assumption, and let's just say we say the growth rate for free cash flow is going to be 5% instead of 15%, and we're going to change the perpetual growth rate to 3%, which is about the GDP growth rate for for the US. And you can see, wow, a completely different valuation for PayPal. It looks like right now the stock price is actually slightly overvalued. Now, let's say we change our assumptions some more and get more pessimistic. Let's just say the stagnation of the growth rate continues and we get about 3% growth for the next five years and 0% thereafter. So the business stagnates. Well, look, we stand to lose 35% of our money if we invest in PayPal now. Isn't that crazy? And that's the problem with using DCF models to do your stock analysis. It kind of gives you a false sense of security because you plug in all these numbers, but your analysis is only as good as your understanding of the business and its competitive advantages. In PayPal's case, here are some questions that you need to ask yourself just to make sure that you're correct about your free cash flow growth rate assumptions. You need to make sure you're pretty confident about your answers. One question you can ask is, does PayPal have a durable competitive advantage over their competitors? And there are many competitors in this space from Apple Pay to Google Pay to Square to Adyen to Affirm. Another important question is, if gross margin continues to decline the same way it has for the last few years, will that also cause the operating margins to start declining as well? Another question, will PayPal's acquisitions start to pay off in the future? And will PayPal make good acquisitions? You can also ask the question, how good is this new CEO and CFO? And lastly, how strong is the PayPal brand going to be in five years for both consumers and merchants?
Now, just to be clear, I'm not bullish on PayPal. I'm not bearish on PayPal. In fact, I lean a little bit more on the bullish side. I'm just trying to point out that discounted free cash flow analysis is a lot more tricky than people online would lead you to believe. And a lot of it comes down to confirmation bias. If you're bullish on a stock, you're going to put some higher growth assumptions. And if you're bearish on a stock, you're going to put some lower growth assumptions. And this is why Warren Buffett doesn't use DCF model calculations, because he wants to invest in businesses that he understands so well that he can just count on his hands and fingers and know how undervalued the business is. Now, if you have to go super detailed and build a really complex DCF model to get to an exact intrinsic value, it might mean that there is a little bit more uncertainty here that might make you want to question your assumptions. Now, does this mean that DCF calculations are useless? Absolutely not. My favorite way to use the discounted free cash flow model is something called a reverse DCF. So here I would go and plug in a perpetual growth rate of 3% and I would keep changing this growth rate of free cash flow until the estimated intrinsic value is similar to the stock price. So if I fiddle around with these numbers a little bit, you can see that the market is roughly pricing in a 7% growth rate in free cash flow over the next five years and 3% thereafter. After that, you need to do some deep research and ask yourself, is this assumption of free cash flow growth accurate or not accurate? And if it's not accurate, how off is the market and how confident are you in this opinion? And if you're not super sure, you might want to do what Warren Buffett would do here and pass on the opportunity and look for something that you have a little bit more certainty on. All right. Thank you so much for watching my video. Really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments what you think about my points here on DCF, as well as your opinions on PayPal. Till next time, Green Bean out. Bye.